Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the podcast. I'm Rick, and I'm here with Brian Big Show Pulley. Brian. Big Show. What's up, what's man? What's up, man? How you doing? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I am recuperating. Um, First Friday, off, before we go any further, mm -hmm. let me say, because I've only been beginning of this, happy 100th show day for you. That's right. This is the 100th show. So happy 100th day. Thank Wanted you. to throw Thank that you. shout out first before we get rolling. Wow. Yeah. I almost forgot. Big, big 100. It, it, and a lot of people don't know what goes on behind the scenes. It, it's, it's a lot of work to put a show together, no matter how big or small. And this one is a small show, uh, but it's very rewarding. I appreciate doing what I do. That's why I like doing it. I'll keep doing it until nobody wants to hear from me again. Well, but the whispers in the business, you're the hardest working man on the internet. So I'm trying, I'm trying, <laughs> you know, between uh, this and the other channel, Rewind, Relive, and Review, I, I'm learning a lot, whether it be about music, uh, movies, or life in general. You know, I stay up to date on the news. I stay up to date on sports. I stay up to date on anything entertainment related, which, like I said, that's what I like doing. That's what I want. So, hey, I'm good. My goal so one of these days is to maybe break something, announce something before anybody else does. You never know. It'll happen. I hope so. And when I say working behind the scenes, I'm also working behind the scenes to get us some uh, special guests occasionally to pop by on the show, uh, whether it be big names or local people just to uh talk about what they do what they've done what they've got coming up so uh be on the lookout for that as well excellent uh like i mentioned i had to rest relax and recharge over the weekend uh after i got off work friday that was 12 days straight of working so i was tired a um, bit i since uh saturday I don't believe I've ran any and I haven't uh, been to the gym to work out. I just needed, you know, three, four, five days to just do nothing. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. Uh, I'll probably, uh, weather permitting, try to get a few miles in tomorrow and uh, Friday, get back into the gym. Uh, how you been doing? Uh, you know. Uh, living it day by day, but you know, so far so good. Like I said, every day above ground's a good day, at least in my book. book. So, um, just take each day as a blessing and keep it pushing. Yes, sir. And we are blessed, whether we want to admit it or not. We are blessed. Yes, sir. So, have you watched that sweet Thor Love and Thunder trailer? I did check it out. I did check it out. I was I was pretty impressed. Um, I'm glad that it it's going to have Star Lord in it. Yes. you know, yes. I think the uh, the comedic uh, between him and and Thor uh, are is pretty neat. I mean, I I laughed a few times, and if I laughed in that thirty second to a minute and a half little trailer, I'm sure the movie's going to be great. I actually like the very last screenshot as well, where he's seen uh, where he saw Jane girl. get the hammer. Yeah, I thought that was pretty dope. So. Look forward to it. Yeah, and you notice two things about this trailer. In the little minute that the, and I guess it was really a teaser, it wasn't a full-on trailer, but in that little minute, they packed a lot of stuff into it. They did. And, and I also liked it how they, they produced it as a, or showed it as a, like a 19, mid-1980s rock video. Yeah. I yeah. like that too. Yeah, matter of fact, um, Kaz and I on the alternate channel put out uh, Led Zeppelin uh, this morning, the Immigrant Song, which mm -hmm. they used in uh, the last Thor movie. And oh, okay. We put a little running commentary at the bottom uh, of the uh, show while the music is playing. And one of the things I said, you know, half smart acidly. Hey, hopefully they'll put a Guns N' Roses track on the new Thor movie. 
Well, here it sure is. Sure enough. <laughs> yep. But the other thing that they didn't show us, you notice they didn't show the bad guy. All that footage, we never saw the bad guy at all. So they, they gave us enough without giving us everything. Yeah, Marvel's good at that. Marvel's yeah. really good at that, you know. Um, Some Marvel. Well, for the they, most part, you know, they they're good at not giving off. away. They kind of ticked with, me off with um, Infinity War. Why is that? Because if you were to, if you were to look at the old teasers and the old trailers, I'd say 30% of that footage never made it to the movie or it was altered. Yeah, because you didn't. One scene where the you Hulk, Hulk wasn't running, running with the exactly. group. Exactly. Yeah. And we figure, okay, Hulk is going to get back at Thanos, and he never showed up again. Yeah. But I think that was also just in the in the you know the prime of when that movie was coming out. There were so many leaks that they had to you know put out false information, so to speak. True. But I mean, the overall product was very good. It was. It was. No lie there. Um, now, just thinking about <clears throat> what we got in the last Thor movie, I was thoroughly entertained. It, it'll be directed again by Taika Waititi, who... And that's Ragnarok, right? That's yeah. what I'm talking about? Okay. Yes, sir. And Waititi has a terrific sense of humor. And I think that's what really made that movie shine. So I'm pretty sure... Uh, he'll go that route again. And like you said, it's got the Guardians of the Galaxy in there too. So he's got so much that he can play with in that movie. Yeah, the guy that plays Star-Lord is, I forget, Chris Hainsworth or something like that. No, that's uh, the name of Thor. That, that's Thor, but he's Chris, um, God, I was going to say Evans, that's Captain America. How many Chris's yeah. does Marvel have on the payroll? Right. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, yeah. It, the dude's hilarious. He's hilarious in the Jurassic World series. He's and he's hilarious in as Star Lord. So yeah, I really like him. Wasn't he in was it what was the name of that show? Parks and Recreation? There was some TV show that he was on. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, I mean he I he's got good up. timing and I think that he'll play well off uh, Chris Hemsworth. And yes. you mentioned Jurassic World. That's coming out later this year, too. So, Yeah, I'm, Chris, I'm really salivating for that one. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, too. Um, let's see. I know it said July. I think it's July 8th that Thor at Love and Thunder comes out. It almost sounds like it's too far away, but we got Doctor Strange, too. In between that, I believe it comes out next month. Yeah, I think because I made the second here in a couple of weeks. And then, you know, you can look behind me and tell I'm a big Star Wars fan. So I'm good because I got, you know, the Obi-Wan TV show coming out at the end of next month. And even though to a lesser degree, I still like Star Trek, um, Strange New Worlds comes out at the beginning of next month. So, yeah, I've, I've seen that as well. I've never been a Trekkie um especially once they went into all these other alternate you know yeah. teams or whatever but i never i never really got into it but i did see that they have that new one coming out i think star trek became a victim of trying to keep up with star wars and they they had to realize we're not the same thing bro we're not no and and that's why i think strange new worlds is going to be pretty good because they said that they're going back to the original series kind of storytelling, just your basic episode of the week. They're not going to try to make it overly dark and they're going to keep it. Now contained. I will say the remakes of the movies that they made here in the last 10 years with the younger Captain Kirk and the younger yeah. Spock and all that. I thought those were pretty good. They were good. Um, especially wow. the first one and the third one. The first one was fantastic. Yes. The only thing I didn't like about the second one, J.J. Abrams got sloppy like he does in everything that he does. And he tries to hide stuff. And then when there's the big reveal, you're like, oh, all you did was change something that somebody's done before. The con thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
you should have just said, hey, this is Khan. And he tried to like say, no, it isn't Khan. And then it turned out to be Khan. Um, he did yeah, it with the, uh, the last Star Wars movie. He did a lot of- He ruined service, the Star Wars movies. Yeah, he didn't tell a good story. Um, to this day, I'm pissed that they didn't do enough with John Boyega's character. You had a Which one is he? He, he was uh, oh. Finn, the, the stormtrooper yes. that defected. Do you know how much storytelling you can tell about that? And uh, they probably will. What, as a really huge Star Wars fan, I'm disappointed that they didn't go with the original Episode Seven, Episode Eight, Episode Nine that that George Lucas actually wrote. You know, I'm disappointed in, in that. Yeah, that's forever going to be a stain on Disney. Yeah, and, and now and, it's too late because you you don't have Carrie Fisher here anymore. Rest her soul, she's gone. Yeah, but you that CGI Luke, stuff they, but you that CGI Luke. stuff they've been doing, you can still uh, you can still do it. Like yeah, in, they uh, they can do it, but you killed Luke, you killed Han, your OG characters are gone. I mean, I understand they wanted to, you know, let the new characters. Isn't Chewie thing. dead too? Didn't Chewbacca no. die? No, they thought he was dead, but they thought he's dead. Yeah, That's right. But he he's still alive. Um, I just I just wish they had went about it a different way. Well, there's you know supposedly what I heard as well is that uh, you know the dude that pay, plays Happy in Iron yeah. Man movies, John Favreau. Yeah, he's yeah, responsible he's, for keeping the franchise alive with together, you know, the Mandalorian. Yes. So he's, and he's the man behind the scenes, and him and some other guy they're s supposed to reset to the end of episode six and redo seven, eight, nine. That'd be nice. I'd like to see that. That's like what I heard. So they're going to, you know, to, to keep the, the Skywalker saga going and not just blowing it off and, you know, the whole Palpatine's granddaughter BS, you know. Yeah, they, they could have went. And so there's no way the that. Emperor was a clone, you know, the whole making him a clone of what, yeah, that, no. Yeah, it, it was horrible. It, it was horrible. It, that, that's that J.J. Abrams sloppy ride. That's and I that. didn't like, I mean, when you, if you go back to when, uh, was the first one that came out, Force Awakens? Was yes. that the first one? Yes, okay. it was. So when all the, you know, you're talking about trailers, all the trailers coming out with Force Awakens, well, you thought Kylo Ren was going to be some badass, and he ended up being like some Brad. Professor Snape character, you know, <laughs> from the, from Hogwarts, he just was like, eh, you know. I didn't like him. Again, J.J. Abrams, sloppy writing. Yeah, Remember, they made Ben Abrams, Solo. Abrams came in on the scene with his TV show Lost. And you know how that built up and built up, only for everybody and to be let down at the out. end. Yeah. Yeah. The only good thing he did was that Jennifer, Jennifer Garner TV show Alias, uh -huh. where she was a secret agent. But uh -huh. I heard it fizzled out at the end, but I never watched the end of it. He has a good setup, but he doesn't. He, he doesn't know close. how to finish. Yeah, he can't close. So, and the other thing that messed Disney up, they didn't have a plan. They and they admitted it. They didn't have a plan. How do you go into a trilogy knowing that you're making a trilogy, and you don't have a plan? And why are you having to divert completely from the whole storyline? I mean, really, you know. Um, the I mean, because there's a Kathleen Kennedy, she's uh -huh. good at making money, but I don't think she's good at telling a story. If that makes what, sense, no, it, it definitely makes sense. I was trying to remember, My, yeah, Myra J, that's what it was. I didn't type it up. They never introduced her in the series, you know, Luke's wife. You know, Myra well, Jade. They messed up a lot because Han and Leia had a Three son kids. and a daughter. Yeah. Yeah. They had the older one too. Yeah. So. And, and Myra Jade and Luke had end up having one. Right. Um, yeah. They, I would actually, as a Star Wars geek, I would actually love to see them go back and do a Old Republic type series and all those mythical Sith, you know. 
uh, that are out there, like Darth Raven and all now, that, and bring them in. I have you know, heard I that Disney is that. planning on doing that, but I don't know when or if that's going to come into fruition. That's, but that's I, really I don't want to see an animated version. You know what I mean? I no, no, see it'll, a it'll, it, it's supposed to be a live action movie. That would be awesome. I think they could do wonders, you know, especially with uh, um, man, all these, all of it's coming on time. Who's the one that created the rule of two? Darth Bane, wasn't it? Yeah, Darth Bane. Dude, that's a trilogy right there if you follow the books. Yeah. Because there's three books in that whole series. There's three money-making movies right there for you. Yeah, I mean... You know, right there, so... They didn't even... They had the opportunity to do the entire Thrawn trilogy. That would have been good. Um, now... They are coming out with... They are supposed to come out with a series like Mandalorian, but it's with Thrawn. Well, I've that's actually gonna, seen that's that. going to be Dave, Dave Filoni and uh, uh, John Favreau. Okay. They're they're, uh, they're weaving the Thrawn thing into the Ahsoka series. Okay. So, um, I don't know how many episodes we're getting of Ahsoka, but I understand that uh, Thrawn is involved, and she actually even mentioned his name in the last episode of The Mandalorian that she was in. When she was fighting that one lady, she asked where he was, and she wouldn't tell. So we kind of know that that's the direction that they're headed. And again, with Favreau and Filoni, they are keeping the franchise alive. They really are. Now, I know we're kind of off topic because we started with Thor, Love and Thunder, and now <laughs> we're on Star Wars. But, uh, you know, you just mentioned Mandalorian. Have you, had, did you watch, or no, did you watch the book of Boba Fett? I did. I did. So were you disappointed? And spoiler alert, it's been out a while. Sorry if you haven't seen it. Mute yeah. this part or fast forward. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Were you, dis um, were you disappointed with how they handled Grogu's? Well, let me like, answer, you. Let me, let me answer you your first question first. I was not really disappointed with this show in general, like a lot of people were. I guess they were expecting Boba Fett to just fight somebody every week. He's trying to get out of being a bounty hunter. He just wants to be a businessman. So I saw that from the get-go. And if you look at his flashbacks when he was living with the Tusken Raiders, mm -hmm. he was learning how to be a person first, a warrior second. A lot of people didn't get that. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some questionable things, especially at the end of the series, that I didn't like and I would have changed. And that goes back to Grogu. I know why they did what they did, but I wish there could have been another way. But if you think about this, if Grogu had stayed with Luke, he'd be dead now because Kylo Ren killed all of Luke's students. Um, but you plus, can write that away. Yeah, you probably could. But I think I mean, he was able going, to escape before then. I mean, he's a small cat, you know, I'm just saying. That, that is also true. But I think that they're looking ahead at season three of The Mandalorian and they like the uh, two of them buddied up together. And they want to, you know, exploit that some more and see how much more they can do with that. I mean, I like that, too, in, in season two of The Mandalorian, how they were. But. I mean, it's not like he's going to jump out and shoot a gun and help, you know, or, I mean, just, he's really just an anchor to, to the Mandalorian, you know, uh, yeah, but he's a fun true. character nonetheless. I, and I think, you know, and maybe I'm just not seeing the forest through the trees, but I think I'm more disappointed because to me, it, it appears that the Luke character, that young Luke character, you, we won't see much of him. And the guy that plays him is a spitting, flipping image of him when he was young, you know? Yeah. Um, it would be so, nice to see Luke again. It would have been nice to see him try to, you know, maybe this was the Jedi he trained before he created the temple. You know, never know. Well, remember, the temple was being built during that same episode. Mm -hmm. So he hadn't With even gotten robots any students or whatever. yet. Yeah. So who knows? And and he may show up in the Ahsoka show for an episode. You never know. Well, and you would think too at that time, but Ben wouldn't even have been 
Ben wouldn't, have, born ben wouldn't have been born yet. No, because uh, Mandalorian takes place, what, maybe three years after Return of the Jedi? Yeah, so... so. He so theoretically he could have trained Yoda and or Yoda Grogu and him not be there, you know, by the time you know maybe that was he was a recruiter, <laughs> you know, for 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 Luke. I don't know. I know how excited I was and how hard my nipples got when I seen Luke Skywalker land in that X wing uh, at the end of Mandalorian. Oh yeah, season two. I was super excited, and then to you see and me just both, kind of fizzle by the out. Way. Got that, got that action yeah. figure on pre-order from Hot Toys because cool. it, 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 <laughs> it may take the, a while for them to make it, but once it comes off the line, I'm going to have one. Right? One George. But to see that hit, it looks like his arc just kind of fizzled out, his that character arc. Yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they write for season three. Um, I don't I mean, know. You still really have with Moff Gideon and and all them you still have yeah and you still have the uh, dark saber and the uh and, and ruling mandalore he still has the dark saber so technically he has claimed to the entire planet if he right. wants it but which is wasteland now right because yeah. they already had the war there yeah yeah it'll be interesting I mean, it's good to set, speculate and guess it's it's a great series it's a great whole new universe. Yeah, it is. Now, um, one thing I want to go over real quick. I saw this article from Insider, insider.com, and it's 14 household items that will become obsolete over the next 10 years. Now, a bunch of these, I saw that coming, but a few of them, I was like, ooh, I didn't think about that. So I'm going to go over them with you and you tell me what you think. The first okay. one is easy. Cable boxes won't be necessary anymore. I don't even use a cable box anymore. Nah, Everything I watch is online. Be Everything is streaming. Yeah. So they were on the way out long ago. Uh, in that same vein, landline telephones. They're very rare. And over the next decade, there'll be a novelty. I do not have a landline anymore. People call my cell number because that's my number. I would say personal landlines, business yeah. landlines, I don't see them going anywhere. Okay, that is true. That's, that's one to think about. I need to think about businesses. The next one, MP3 players are being completely replaced by smartphones. Yeah, I see that. Um, Wow. Do they still make MP3 players? <laughs> I was like, I don't even remember what happened to my iPod because all my music is on my phone. So Exactly. Um, I do know that Heather uses her iPod still because uh, when she's at work, she just wants something that she can slide in her pocket and just have one earbud in. But uh, she don't want to drain the battery on her phone because she wants to listen to music all day. I wish I had it like that at work, but you know. <laughs> uh, but other than that I couldn't tell you what happened to my iPod where it is I've been listening to music on my phone so yeah that should have been over all right this one might take a little bit longer but I can see it being phased out in 10 years credit cards because it's being replaced by digital options it says now here's yeah. what I Here's where I kind of see where they're coming from. Um, there's a feature. I don't know if you have an iPhone or if you have a different brand. But the Apple Pay. IPhone. So then mm. you know about the Apple Pay. You know, mm. I recently set that up with my new debit card from the bank. And now I know that most places I go, I don't even have to take my wallet out. I just press the button on the phone and flash the phone above the sensor. And it comes out just like that. Some things you order online, it says, do you want to pay with Apple Pay? Don't have to fool with pulling my card out and putting that information in. It just comes out. So I can see that happening. It will take every bit of those 10 years, though, because in the meantime, there's still too many places that don't have that ability. And at the same time, there's too many people out there that need alternative ways that are not digital. 
So I would say, I mean, for me, my, the old geezer in me is not going to put my information on my phone because it ain't nothing but a little computer and anybody can get into it and hack it. Uh, so, I mean, th that's kind of what I tell myself. I don't use the Apple Pay. I hope credit cards don't go away because I, I don't mind pulling it out. Not that I don't use, I mean, I hardly use credit cards anyway. If I don't have the cash, I can't afford it, but there you um, go. Now, the only yeah. reason why I put my debit card on Apple Pay, not any uh, credit cards or anything, it's got the encryption on there. And if somebody was to go into my phone, they could get any transaction that I've paid for online without Apple Pay. Oh, no. Yeah, most so, definitely. They could do that. I just don't like, want to give them an extra way to get in there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, and, and I could be completely off bases technical wise. And it's just something in my brain that says, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> now here's one that i wouldn't even thinking would make this list because you know you're thinking tech stuff plastic straws will begin to disappear as the world moves toward environmentally friendly legislation how now, am i going how am i going to drink my shake that. without a straw well you have a paper straw and a lot of places have those already hmm and and I would say the only reason why I can completely understand this is because I have a 14-year-old daughter, excuse me, 15-year-old daughter, who is into saving the turtles. And that was a big thing last ah, year. Okay. And part of that is getting rid of all plastic straws and things that go out into the ocean and they choke on or get tied around or whatever because they think it's a, you know, a worm or something because of the way it degrades. Definitely. And so... I mean, I can see that, you know, with the with the earth trying to go more eco-friendly. Yeah, I could actually see that before I could see credit cards going away. Well, yeah, when you put it that way, you, you are correct. Now, the next one on the list goes hand in hand with the MP3 players. Digital cameras oh, are going bye-bye. Now, you know what? I've got, I've got one of those little digital cameras and I don't even use it. If I'm not using my big professional camera, I'm using my phone. So yep. I can definitely see that. Yep. Digital cameras. I, I think I gave mine to my son. <laughs> uh, traditional car keys are starting to go away. And we've seen that with a lot of these newer cars that come out. If you've got your fob with you, when you get within a certain amount of feet, you can either press a button or automatically unlock. And most of these cars now have push to start, which we've needed for a long period of time because um, I know, I don't know about you, but the heavier your keychain is, the harder that is on your starter. But mm -hmm. that's a whole nother thing. Here's the one that I hate. DVD and Blu-ray discs will be replacing by streaming be replaced by streaming services. I am very much into physical media. Yes, I stream a lot of stuff that you just can't get physical media for. For example, if I want to watch Moon Knight, there's only one way to do it, Disney Plus. But when the latest movies come out, I still prefer to buy them and own them. Uh, i.e. see the last spider-man movie i have it on blu-ray uh we got dune the other day i have it on uh, blu-ray or 4k and and the reason why i do that i understand that it saves space to stream it but at the same time a lot of people don't understand i don't care how much you pay for it you'll never own it and if something were to happen to your database, all those movies are gone. If Disney decided to shut down today, you don't have access to those movies anymore that you paid the same amount of money as I did for. And I'm just going to hold on to my DVDs and Blu-rays for as long as I can. I'm going to be the uh, old geezer in the room that talks about, well, in my day, we put a disc in and watch movies. Right. Um that that person one doesn't affect me much i mean because i'm a i stream and move on i don't care i don't need to own it to i'm I, there'll be plenty of ways to see that same movie you know what i mean it'll if i'm streaming a service to see live television on tbs or tnt or the sci-fi channel 
one of those channels is going to play their movies here in the next five years. So I'll see it again. You know what I mean? But I do get it. I, I just don't collect them like I used to. But I get it. I and, understand your and I've slowed down too, but I like to have, look at my shelf and see all my Star Wars movies. I can just pick oh, yeah. which one I want and put it in. Um, every Marvel movie, and I say movie because their TV shows do not come out on physical media. Those are Disney Plus only, um, which is a, a, another subject for another time. So, <laughs> and it's not just movies, music. I still love and value my CDs. Um, so are they saying CDs won't be available? Yes. Uh, CDs see, that's, that'll are, hurt. are more likely to disappear faster than movies because so many people, your new car stereo don't even have, yeah, iTunes, <laughs> Spotify, Tidal, all that. Your new car stereos don't even have a slot for your disc. Um, so it, it's going to go the way faster for music than it would for movies. But they're, they're both supposed to be gone in the next 10 years. So I'd say when you explain a, it like that, yeah, I could see that happening. A decade from now, I'm going to be one sad puppy. Hopefully, in a decade from now, we'll, we can come back on the one millionth show and we can discuss <laughs> how everything went from the 100th show. Hey, there that's you go. disappeared. Yeah. Write that down so we don't forget. I will do that. <laughs> but here's my hope. All right. I know that they're saying that these things might be obsolete, but didn't they say that about the LP when the CD came out? True. And uh, and they're still making vinyl. Yeah, records, vinyl's hotter than ever now. Yeah, it's a, it's the new end thing. Yeah, so. My yeah. daughter actually, last year, that's what she wanted for her birthday, a record player and some actual albums. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's a new thing for the kids. So you never know. What's old might be new again one day. Yeah, history tends to repeat itself. So here in the next 20 years, we'll, they'll, CDs will be back in fashion and DVDs and all that other crap. Yeah, now this one on the list I do see coming, wireless charging. For example, my phone now is on a charging pad. It's not even connected to anything. Um, granted, the iPhone has the port for the plug-in charger, but, you know, as soon as I found out that it was wireless capable, I don't even know what happened to that, that uh, plug-in port. Um, so I can see that. Yeah, I can see it too. Um, I don't use, I mean, I just use the old cord, plug it in, but yeah, I could definitely see that. Here's one that I didn't see coming. Paper maps can't compete with digital options. I didn't see it coming, but I totally understand it because the last trip I went on, I think we used, um, MapQuest or something maps, whatever on the phone of all things, uh, for directions didn't need a paper map had one on standby just in case but yeah i mean when you've got siri that can talk to you the whole way um can't be yeah i can see that being in the transportation field that's what i do um i mean yeah got drivers use their phones to get from point a to point b they don't even they don't even carry an atlas anymore hmm. you know and and, and here's one that Long time coming. Um, granted, I'm corded right now because I'm using the one connected to the computer for the podcast, but headphones. Uh, I do have a pair of wireless headphones, and when I run, I have a pair of wireless earbuds. Uh, so, yeah, those cords are going bye-bye. And believe me, when I get the next computer that I'm going to get, I'm going to make sure it's Bluetooth compatible so that I won't be tethered by a cord in the future on my computer so i can totally yeah. see that and that ain't even going to go the 10 year distance i think in five years or less you won't even see manufacturers making corded headphones yeah i'd, I'd, I'd have to agree with you there here's another one that's already way beyond started paper bills aren't necessary when you can make payments online and, you know, it isn't even just about payments online. You can do a payment over the phone or the old geezer method. You go down in person and make your payment. Uh, so yep. <clears throat> paper bills, nah, 
email me my bill. I'd say mm -hmm. most companies now will charge you if you want a paper bill. Wow. If so you that's, refuse to. That's how they get and, and some people charge you without you knowing that you're being charged. Um, here in Kansas City, it was our BPU bill. And it had, it was, I mean, it was minimal. It was like 17 cents or some bull crap like that. But for, you know, printing your bill, I stop printing my bill, send it to me digitally. I don't need it. Take that off, you know? So yeah, you, a lot of these companies are putting that in there trying to be slick. Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, 17 cents really doesn't sound like much. But then that turns out to be about two dollars and something in a year, and if you're paying, we'll just say ten years on the same utility bill, think about how much money you've paid in that ten year period just for the right to have a paper bill, right? And paid without knowing exactly that you were paying for it. Yeah, they took that money from you. Yeah, yeah. So that that. That's something that everybody should look look at your next statement and make sure that there is no hidden fees like that on your bills. Yep. The next one, as we wind the list down, traditional alarm clocks aren't necessary if you own a smart device. Um, I totally get that because I use my phone. Uh, I'm so much in a routine now that I even get up without the use of the alarm. Um, I'm up and ready to go at 345, so I just don't need it, but I totally see it. I couldn't even tell you the last time I've had an alarm clock because I've used the phone. Yeah, the uh, the clocks now are coming out are smart clocks. The one I see because like we have one, it's a Google, a Google clock, you know, it, and everything's hooked to it. So I can turn off my lights and all that stuff just by mm. talking to the clock. You know, hey, you know, hey Google, set the alarm for blah blah blah, and the clock will tell me, you know, alarm set for you know. So yeah, I can nice. definitely see that. Yeah, and people are already starting to move away from plastic bags. Back in the day, they'd ask you if it's paper or plastic. Now, uh, they, what's old is new again, going back to paper bags, because it's more environmentally friendly. And, and one better, a lot of these stores, they either have, accept, or sell the uh, fabric bags that you can reuse over and over. Yep, my wife has a ton of those. So does mine. So, <laughs> so I see a lot of the things on the, on this list are, uh, are are they're they're coming around. So, just I'm still ticked about the digital stuff, but hey, it's the old man in me that is not willing to let go of my CD and DVD collection. That's all. Just hold on to it. Hey, I'm sure, though, if, the, if there's people still willing to pay for it, there'll be somebody still willing to manufacture it. That is, that is the storyline of this country. And let's hope that uh, that uh, just just imagine if you could come up with chocolate air telling you you'd be a millionaire overnight. Oh, I, I quit working <laughs> forever. Y'all looking for me? Find me on the golf course. <laughs> right my here's own somebody, the one i own yeah here's somebody that should not be working anymore right now <clears throat> a white reporter has a meltdown after seeing black people at country music at a country music award show and his words were it's not wakanda and and i'm thinking to myself what in the hell so without going over the whole article um I just want to say that paraphrasing. Did I lose you? No. Can you hear me? Yeah, can I can hear, hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. All right. I, I, I was just going to say that just paraphrasing the article, not going through the whole thing. One of the things he said, I don't know who this black guy is hosting. And by the way, the black guy that was hosting was, um, God, what was his the name? The dude that played Falcon. Yeah, um, and his name the guy's is, name is Patrick Howley. Oh, the uh, yeah, the host, the white guy. Yeah, yeah. 
but I'm, I'm trying to remember the guy that played Anthony Mackey. There we go. Anthony Mackey was hosting. Now, you know, and most of the people that uh, watch or listen to this podcast regularly know that I do a music show on the uh, alternate YouTube channel. And we explore all different types of music. And one of the things that Kaz and I went into it full knowledge, it doesn't matter who's in front of the microphone. It doesn't matter who's playing the instrument. It doesn't matter even what the sound is that comes out of those instruments. Only thing we care about is do we like it? We don't make any preconceived notions about anybody. If we did, there'd be a whole bunch of stuff that we just wouldn't listen to. And that's one of the right. things that I can't stand about some people. They don't want to watch this because oh, there ain't nobody in there that look like me. They don't want to listen to something because why you want to listen to that mess? How do you know it's mess? You haven't even given it a try. And Anthony Mackie mentions that he grew up listening to country. That's what his parents listened to. So that's what he listened to coming up. What does it matter if he's black? And, and this Patrick Howley, he's like, I don't know who this black guy is who's hosting. It's supposed to be country music. No offense, y'all have hip hop, basketball, just fly with your flock, bro. This isn't Wakanda. All right. Right there, this dude should have been fired. But let's break this down. I don't know who the black guy is hosting. If you don't know who Anthony Mackie is, because, you know, take away the dozens of other films that he's been in, as we mentioned, he's been in the Marvel movies. <clears throat> so you should know who he is. It's not like he's some random dude they pulled off the street. Um, secondly, <clears throat> of course we know it's country music. That's the reason why it says CMT, CMA on it, excuse me. But here's the thing that really burns me up. No offense, y'all have hip hop and basketball. Now, if that isn't offensive, I don't know what is. And full disclosure of the 300 CDs that are on my wall, I guarantee you, less than 50 of them are hip hop. I like several different other kinds of music. I love, I love rap, but I also love R&B. I love me some old school R&B. I love classic rock. Um, hell, we just put out a Led Zeppelin song on the alternate channel. One of my favorite songs ever. So I, I don't know. Big Show, what did you think about this dude? Man, I was, <laughs> I was instantly heated <laughs> when I heard his comment. Um, no, because whenever somebody says, no offense, but Obviously, you're about to make an offensive statement. Um, I agree with you. Right after he spoke, he should have been instantly fired. He should not even be able to work. Um, people have been fired for less in that business, that field. But, you know, you read some of his things, you know, but him, yeah, even his, in that little one minute or two minute, um, video that i seen he says something to the fact about i get it that the melanated people invented country music but then he started you know talking derogatory like um you know trying to trying to sound like he was being a he was just being a butthead you know it just, it really irritated me. Um, and then, you know, this, he said the whole, this isn't Wakanda thing, like more than once. 
it just really irritated me. He also said that there were um, so there were so many black people there. Sorry to say this, but there are so many black celebrities who have nothing to do with country music. And it's like, why? If you look at any music show, whether it's black or white, there are celebrities that do other things, but they still like country music. So they are there to show their appreciation, whether it be people in sports, uh, actors and actresses, or musicians from other genres. Yeah, that fly with your flock comment, that was just stupid. Yeah. Where, I, in my whole point, I was thinking, where is Will Smith at? Yeah. Smack the hell out the guy. Yeah, I don't even want to get back into the Will Smith thing. We talked about that a few <laughs> Sorry, weeks ago. Sorry, too soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I still don't know what to make about that situation. And I honestly think that we should quit talking about the guy. We're giving him too much press. You know what? I don't disagree with you on that. Okay. Lighter side of things. Let's talk real quick about sports. NBC released the uh, new broadcasting crew for their NFL games on Sunday night. So... Uh, it will no longer be Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth because Al went to Amazon. Yes, y'all heard it right. Amazon is doing sports. So Mike Tirico will be joining Chris Collinsworth. And I don't know too much about Tirico. I've, I've, I've listened to him do a few games for ESPN. He, he isn't bad. I just don't know what to make of that pairing yet. What do you think? I never was a fan of Mike Tirico anyway, and I think Al Michaels carried Chris Collinsworth, so it's gonna it's it's it might make our ears bleed to to see Tirico and Chris Collinsworth actually talk during a football game. That might be the ones where I just turn off the sound. Interesting. Yeah. Now, if you were to look at it like that, I, I'll, I'll be honest. If you look at the three networks that do football, this is like the, they'd be ranked number three out of your headliners because, I mean, I mean, they, with Al being in Amazon, Fox they might anymore. be number four. <laughs> it's not Fox anymore, but ESPN now has Aikman and Buck, and then your boy Romo is still with Nance on CBS. So. They make a pretty good team. They uh, do. Well, and, and Aikman and Buck do too. Don't get me wrong. I just can't stand Joe Buck. I just really and right. see, I have yeah. the opposite. I I feel that way about Aikman. You can't stand Aikman. I mean, I don't hate the guy. I just why are you talking, dude? Just let's see the game. That's that's the way I feel <laughs> when, when I'm hearing him. Yeah, I'm. Probably that residual Royals hate, Kansas City Royals hate I have for Joe Buck is still in my bloodstream from uh, when we when we played the San Francisco Giants back in 2014 in the World Series. Um, you know, that uh, I pro probably still have some of that residual hate. But uh, I'm going to be honest with you. What you feel about that is what a Raiders fan feels about every commentator <laughs> on, on every station. Because it's all they're always pro whoever the other team is. Well, you know, the Raiders we, suck, but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother. We could be playing an 0-16 team and we could be undefeated. And the announcer will try to find a way to say how devastating this would be to the Raiders if this team got their first win tonight, you know. <laughs> Hold up, but not as bad as how the Dallas Cowboys get dissed, because they get dissed pretty good too. Dallas kind of deserves what they got because Jerry talks him up every year, and it's a big fail. I seen a meme over the weekend that showed the because you know the USFL started over the weekend, uh -huh. and it was showing the rankings, and it put Dallas Cowboys <laughs> as the ninth USFL team. Uh, so I thought, or the wow. power rankings, they were number nine out of eight teams. So wow, that, that's <laughs> colder that than the meme that I saw about <laughs> Dallas. I think they had the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and the Cowboys logo. And then underneath the Cowboys logo, it says, 
things that uh, uh oh, no underneath the logo it said dallas will uh win the super bowl and they said these are things that grown men should no longer believe in <laughs> that's pretty good i've also seen one that says the star on the helmet's not a logo it's a rating i've seen that one before that was cold too <laughs> Um, uh, but no, I, going back to the original question, uh, if I had to rank them, probably, I would probably put the NBC cast or, uh, not the CBS cast first, that'd be, uh, Romo and Nance, right? Yeah. And then probably Buck Aikman and then, uh, now, the Tariqo, we don't know uh, who's going to be headlining on Fox on Sunday, so. That one's up in the air. Well, wouldn't that be Aikman and Buck? Aren't they the headliners? No. Remember, they went to ESPN. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Um, I, you're right. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't putting that in part of my equation. Real quick before we uh, skip out, I do want to see if it says here who is going to be doing the uh, – Fox NFL announcers. Maybe they have. Maybe they have uh, reached a decision on who their guys are. Wow. The leading pairing from Fox joined. ESPN to call Monday Night Football replacing Steve Levy and Lewis Riddick. Okay, so, yeah, just tell me who's going to be on Fox. That's all I want to know. I should have asked. Well, that Gary. Monday Night Crew sucked, too. And this is not because I'm, you know, Raider fan. Let me see if I can. Monday Night's on ESPN <laughs> haven't been any good since Gruden left. Um, yeah, Thursday night, that's Amazon. Jim Nance and Romo on CBS. Yeah, it's still to be determined for Fox. They're saying the Fox. <clears throat> it, it could be Kevin Burkhead and uh, Greg Olson. So they might be the worst. Yeah, they're saying Kevin Burkhart's going to be the Greg Olson, okay. Who's Greg Olson? Uh, recently retired NFL player. I think he was the. Uh, oh, okay. And he was a tight end Carol for the Panthers. Yeah, gotcha. Panthers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so, the, yeah, so Fox is going to suck. Pretty much. Pretty much. But going back to that uh, NBC announcers they will get the very first game of the year for the uh, hall of fame game so we'll we'll see right off the bat how good or bad they're going to be i just think it's ironic that you know it's a raider I game. Think they'll, be, they'll be fine i mean it's going to be no different than how they were on fox they'll be fine that's true they'll be fine i mean it's own things changing as a logo behind them and, and the checks are bigger true true that true that but I think the product will be the same or what we're used to, you know. Yeah. Now, um, before we close it out this week, I want to ask you, have you been keeping up with this Johnny Depp, Amber Heard thing? Just bits and pieces, my friend. I haven't really gave it much attention. Um, you know, just kind of reading things when they pop up on my search engines or something, if I'm getting ready to go into another website. But I heard that, and I, I, the only things I know is that supposedly the chick was abusive to Johnny Depp, and there were some video or audio recordings that were played the other day in a court. Other than that, I did I haven't really pay, gave it much thought or any of my attention. Here's my thing, and this is just a theory, but just based off of what I see every day in the world, no matter what she did to him, no matter what she said to him because she's already cried abuse on him the court of public opinion 
has already made up their mind on Johnny Depp. No matter what happens, no matter how this comes out, um, I, I think his fate has already been sealed. And it's a shame. Meaning what? I think people will look at him like he's at fault no matter what. I mean, he's going to have to come up with showing that she was just Satan incarnate in, in order to sway this jury. And right now, all I'm hearing from both of them is a bunch of he said, she said. I would say maybe, but just with the little stuff that I've heard, I've, I haven't really heard a bunch of negative stuff towards him. It's always been towards her. You know, I haven't yeah, really I, heard of And him that's doing one of the things that's swaying, swaying it, um, his direction. And I've also heard that she was abusive to other men that she has been with before as well. So that, that helps Johnny quite a bit. But again, when we're talking about court judges and juries, it's not really about what you say. It's about swaying the jury in your direction. And in order to do that in a court of law, when they sit down as jurors, all they want to know is where's the proof? If they don't have proof, they throw the statement completely out as soon as it rolls off your lips. And unfortunately well in some cases in some cases they do that yeah yeah in some cases i mean, I mean you know i'm not trying to open up a can of worms but there was quite a bit of proof that oj did kill them two people <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and you know the jury just kind of went oh pretty flowers you know they looked over to the side so you know in some cases yes <clears throat> but again they were looking at proof and as soon as his judge i mean his his lawyer said if it doesn't fit you must acquit he had him he got him off right there with that statement yeah we 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 don't have time to have so, that whole because OJ that's a whole wore, show in itself because oj wore gloves that were way too tight <laughs> he got off well he also didn't take his arthritic arthritic medication he had on a pair of plastic gloves before he put those gloves on so i mean the, the defense knew what they were doing don't get me wrong yeah, the defense won the case like they're supposed to win the case, but that does not mean that he did not do it. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I agree. I mean, obviously he he had some culpability because he lost in the civil civil trial. Yeah, I mean, but unfortunately, like that's a whole nother ball of worms and Pandora's box. We don't want to open that up right now. Yeah, I mean, we we yeah we could do a whole show based off of that alone, <laughs> but. You know, I, I'm going to continue in bits and pieces where I can to follow this Johnny Depp, Amber Heard thing. And I, I, I wish, have to dive into I wish it a little bit more. For Johnny. I mean, I don't know a whole lot about Amber Heard, but from what I've heard uh, stories in the public. And if if what I hear is true, she's one of those females that just makes trouble wherever she goes. And it's never her fault. It's always somebody else's fault. And that's my biggest pet peeve about people that never take, uh, they don't, they refuse to take the blame for their own messes. It's always someone else's fault. I, I just can't stand that. Yeah, me neither. Take, take ownership. Yeah. All right. You got anything else you want to go out with before uh, we take off this week? No, no, I think uh, it was, it, I, I missed you last week. How'd your son do? Um, he ran the 400. It wasn't a very good run. I guess I need to go back to the week before. He started off a little bit too fast and flamed out. And then last week he started off too slow and couldn't catch up. And when he came to run the 200 at the end of the meet, um, he was like, should I pace myself? I'm like, no, nah, it's the 200. It's start fast, finish fast. Go all out the whole way. He did it, and uh, he ended up getting second place. So, deal. So, yeah, I, I once knew, he learns that pace and then when to kick, he'll be all right. Yeah. 
they have a, another one, another track meet on Friday. So we're going to see how, how he does then. So uh, I'm hoping that he keeps that mindset. He's got a good teacher. I, I, I do what I can, but um, I, how I try old to, is he? Uh, 11. So he's only in sixth grade. So I, uh, I do happen to know a track coach that does it off the side and he's not actually affiliated with a school or anything that over the summertime that he has a bunch of like high school kids and things that come do his clinics and things. Oh, yeah. If you're ever interested, I can give you his information. All right. I'm, I might have to do that for you. We'll find out what yeah. he wants to do uh, going into seventh grade. I know ultimately he wants to play golf for the uh, school, but you have to be an eighth grader up. So he's got a couple years on that. And surprisingly, you know, I've never been a golf person. I think I went golfing with you guys one time, I think, yeah. back in the day. And uh, just something I never did. But uh, my daughter, she actually starts her first golf lesson tomorrow night. So she you, wants to do that. You might so get that bug. You might get yeah, that probably bug. Not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Um, I haven't picked up my clubs in many, many months. Um between work, working on other projects, and just trying to uh, physically get back in good running shape, haven't had a haven't had a chance to yet. Yeah, and I, I'll get back into it. I know my wife; she uh, started regripping her clubs last week, so that was a hint. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna need to get with the program here real soon. <laughs> Um, what do you got going on this weekend? Any plans? Anything special? Actually, the uh, big plan I got is on Sunday, uh, me and my boy, we uh, chartered a fishing trip. So we're going to go try oh. to catch us some big catfish off the river on Sunday. So hopefully the weather holds it out and have some pictures of some really nice cats. So Nice. Nice. Um, I don't really have anything major planned for the weekend, some rest and relaxation. I am going to maybe start an art project. We'll see. And if I get it finished over the weekend, I'll post it on Instagram and or Facebook. Sweet. Uh, don't hold your breath because it's the same project I've been threatening to start for the last three weeks now. So eventually I'll get to it. Duly noted. Will not hold my breath. <laughs> All right. Next week. Where'd Big Show go? <laughs> he he collapsed holding his breath <laughs> but like i always tell the little kids uh if you want to threaten to hold your breath go ahead because all you'll do is pass out and start breathing again this is true so whether you like it or not you'll be back next week <laughs> <laughs> good lord willing good lord yes willing. sir all right another good one down i appreciate you bro hey and you too my friend for everybody that's watching on uh, YouTube, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And whatever platform you're on, leave us a comment. Let us know how you like the show. Um, any suggestions, tips, tricks. I'm open on everything. Um, I want to continue to grow and get better. Just like I said last time, that, that's, that's the way it works. Uh, you never want to be stagnant because... If you're not here for a reason, you're not worth being here. Amen. All right. We're going to go ahead and shut it down then. And big show. I can't wait to see you next week. I know we said Lord willing. I'm pretty sure he's going to be in our corner. I think so. All right. Everybody, y'all have a good night. Stay positive. Stay blessed. I'll see you, man. See you next week. All right.